Hello and welcome to this new tutorial where we're going to be learning how to do this particular effect with any image that you choose. I'm really excited for this one and I hope you are too. So without any further ado, let's start right off. We're going to do this entire effect using geometry nodes. So the first thing that we're going to do is open up a new geometry node editor. So we can just bring this down and change this to the geometry node editor. Now, with the default cube itself, we can create a new geometry node tree. Now, the entire effect is happening on different grids. So we have to add in a grid. So we do Shift A, and then we can just search for a grid, and we can just add that in. Now, we don't actually need the original group input, so we can just remove this. You can Control right click to actually make disconnections. So let's take the grid and plug that into the geometry. Now, the grid currently has three vertices on the x-axis and three on the y-axis. Now, we will require equal number of vertices on either axis to make sure that the ratio stays the same. So what we can do is we can take a value node and just place, plug that in to both of them. So here you can do shift right click to create another node and you can just plug that in. So now as you change the value, you change the number of vertices. So we can say maybe 50 as a good starting point. Now, once you have that, we have to instance something onto these different points that's being created on the grid. The grid has 50 vertices and we want each of them to be a point or a circle. So let's search for instance on points. So now we can just place that in over here and now we have to apply something that's gonna be instance. Now you could use cylinders or you could use circles. For now, I'm just gonna use a circle so we take a mesh circle and we place that into the instance. Now immediately you see that the circles are way too big. So what we can do is we can reduce the radius, but we're gonna find a better way to actually reduce the radius as we change the size of the grid. So first thing we notice is that the circles are only the out outer edges. We want the entire thing to be filled. So we change the fill type from none to n gone because we're not gonna be adding any subdivision surfaces. It doesn't matter. We don't have to have it triangular. So now we can just reduce the radius to maybe something like 0 0.005 to start off with. And now we can see that we have circles on each of the points. Now we will add this value into this in a while, but till then, let's just go ahead and figure out how we're going to change the scale of these with respect to some image that you have. So you can actually do this with any image. I've used a black and white image, but when you use any image, it takes the likeness value anyway, so it's fine. So let's search for an image texture. Now you can open and search for the image that you want. Now that I've opened up the image right here, I have to connect the color into the scale. But before I do that, I'm going to create something to get some more control. So I'm going to do shift a color ramp. And now take the color into the factor and put this color into the scale. The moment we do that, we see that we're getting something, but it's not quite right. And you can see how the face is going top and bottom. Now, this is because the location of the image is not accurate. So normally we'd use um, object coordinates in the shader editor, but we don't have that over here. So what we can do is we can take a position node and plug that into the vector. Now, it doesn't make any difference, but we can change the position now by adding in some values. So we can take a math node, make sure that it's vector math, plug that right in over here and change all of these to 0 0.5. So right as soon as you do that, you actually get your face. So that is pretty cool for now. Now that we actually have the face, we see that the areas that are not lit or black is smallest. Now, depending on what you choose the background to be, you might want it to be the other way around. But in our case, and that's why we actually have this color ramp so that you can get it done based on your background. So if your background is white and you go into the rendered view and your points are black, so let's actually give it the material itself now. So just after the instance on points, you can actually set material. So we set material and we choose the material. Now in the material, we can change the base color to black. And when we do that and remove overlays, 
this is what it looks like. On the other hand, if you have the background to be black, which is what I'm going to do, in that case, you'd want the points to actually be the other way. So you can take this color ramp and just reverse the color ramp and also make sure that the color of each dot is white. And there you get this effect. Now, once you do that, we have to get this image to actually reveal in. So there's two ways of doing that. One is by just changing the scales or the other is by actually using a noise texture. So let's use this selection with a noise texture to actually get that effect where it actually comes in. So let's move all of this down and add in a noise texture over here. Now that you have a noise texture, we can actually connect the color of the noise texture to a color ramp and take the output of the color ramp and put it into the selection. So now you see, as you drag this slider, the face slowly disappears and appears. The cool thing is that you can actually keyframe the position of each slider. So let's actually increase our timeline again, figure out the length of the animation. So let's say it's a 10 second animation. So let's go to frame 300, go to the output properties over here and change the frame rate to 30 frames per second. And now we can actually figure out where the entire image is completely gone. So I think something like that looks fine. And then we can just hit I on the position. And now we can go to something like 280 or maybe 270 so that it's there for one second and just bring this back till every single dot or circle is completely drawn. So I think by this much itself, every dot that's to be drawn is going to be drawn. So let's say 0 0.3 and then just hit I. So now when you actually play back the animation, the dots slowly appear and the face is drawn. So that looks really nice. But I feel like all the way for the first one second, there's absolutely no dots being drawn. So let's actually go till here, just I and all channels, and then take this and drag this to the front. So now it's going to start appearing as soon as the animation actually starts. So there, now we actually have the animation of the face coming in. Again, I feel like all the dots that are to be drawn gets drawn by this time itself. So you can actually take 180 and we can actually end the animation at 180 itself. It doesn't have to be that long of an animation. So there you go. Just hit I, all channels, and then just delete this. So now you have a six second animation of the entire face coming in just like that. Now let's talk about how you can actually change this resolution. So if we want like a better resolution, you can actually change the value and you see you get a much better resolution. But right now the resolution isn't changing because the size of our spheres is constant at 0 0.005 radius. We need this to change along with the number of points in order for us to get a good animation. So to do that, let's add in a math node. And change it from add to divide so that we can divide a small number by whatever this value is so and feed that into the radius. So let's just go ahead and keep it at 0.5 itself and just divide 0.5 by that number so that we get a pretty small number and feed that into the radius. Now you see how the size of the circles are also going to change along with the value over here. So if we give it a very small value like 10, you can see this is what you get. You can increase that to 20 or you can increase that to 50 and you'll slowly start seeing the image and you can choose what resolution you prefer. So maybe 100. And if you want something really, really crisp, you can go for something like 200. And that's going to be a really nice image. So you can actually use this technique for anything. And it's a really cool, super awesome technique. And in fact, you can keyframe this value so that you go from something like one all the way to 150 in the animation as well. So let's actually start this animation at 181 and end it at 181 
plus let's make it another six second animation so 180 and now at 181 at 180 let's just i this and then at 181 let's make the value down to something like one okay i and then at 361 or again let's let it be there for a while so 331 make the scale 150 and then hit i and now you can actually watch how the image is slowly formed this is a really cool effect and you can get so many variations just by doing this apart from this you can also use a video sequence over here if you please to do so but all of that might be left out for another tutorial in order to set up your camera in case you were wondering you can go ahead and switch on the overlays by clicking that button and then you can go into your camera view by hitting numpad 0 or by going to view viewport and then selecting camera under viewport Once you have that, you can select the camera by selecting the outer edge bounding box of the camera in your viewport and then hitting Alt G and Alt R to clear location and rotation. Now with the camera selected, you can grab it on the Z axis and move it back out. Now in case your image is like mine, which is concentrated towards one side of the picture, you can grab the camera on the X and Y axes and just centralize the image as you please. After you complete that, you can go ahead and render your animation out by changing the settings to FFmpeg video and then selecting your output folder. I hope you found this video useful and you are able to use this technique for creating various other interesting pieces. I will release a few other videos using similar techniques to get different effects. So I will see you in the next one and until then, stay creative.